Guys, really work on your worship. Make sure all the players are top notch so that it's super impressive when you put on the service. So we begin to put value on these things that are not what Jesus told us to do. But what did Jesus tell us to do? Make disciples. Some of you would say, well, we do that at church. Yes, I think there, some of that is happening. But the question is, is it happening at a rate that is, is best? Why do we see so many churches closing? Why do we see so many believers attending a church and not living for Jesus? Attending a church and not walking in Christ? Because we've made attendance what Christians do instead of being disciples of Jesus. And as a church, we feel so led to love God, which means to worship Him with all we have, our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love all people, And the way we're going to try and learn to do that is to be authentic disciples, real disciples who make disciples. Why? For the glory of God and for the good of the city. That is the mission of our church. And so that's the reason. We we said we could keep doing status quo. We could keep just keep making better services. And and friends, there's never been a time in, in our history that we... We have the best sound tools and the best instruments and the best educations and the best worship. And we have everything is tool wise. We have everything we can have to put on a good service. And we still are not making an exceeding amount of disciples who make disciples. And so we have to ask the question, okay, what has to change? Because what's important is not that we do a great service. What's important is that we create great servants for the king. That's what matters. Building disciples, make, building a culture of discipleship. So we don't want to be status quo, right? Let me ask you this. If you had your kid, and we all, for those of us who have children, they go to school, and the, and the school system said, our new way of learning is just going to be an assembly. We're going to have 500 kids in the assembly, and uh, that's how we're going to teach your kid to read. You'd be like, all right. My kid's not going to learn a thing. And they wouldn't in the assembly. It's with teacher over the smaller group of teach, or students going, hey, do you get this? Are you walking this out? Do you understand this? Are you following this? Are you getting me? And so we can't just have an assembly and expect people to be made into disciples. We need to, we need to come alongside each other and give some real instruction. For too long, we've defined the church as a service or as a program unrelated whether, whether or not it's getting the job done. So we just keep on keeping on. Let's just do a service. Our metric for success is not how many people sit in a building. Sometimes we think that if our church would just grow, well, then you just have a whole bunch of people. That's not what God's called us to. He's not called us to a bunch of people in a building, but how people live as disciples. Attendance is a bad metric for a life in Jesus. That's the reason we're making a change, okay? Because we love you. And also as elders, if you're an elder, raise your hand real quick so people know where you are. Is that all of us today? Okay, there's three of us in here. Bill Jerry's one too. So we will be held responsible, the Bible says in Hebrews, for your spiritual walk, your spiritual life. That's kind of serious for us. So we're kind of like, Lord, what do we need to change so that you, you'll be honored in how we're equipping your people for the work of ministry? So attendance is a bad metric for a life in Christ. We have to ask these questions. Are they living for Christ in community with others? These are some questions I had to even ask. Ask your own heart. Are you living for Christ in community with others? Are you actively being salt and light where you live? Are you praying for God to save people and join him where he's working toward the mission of Jesus? Are these active things that are happening in your life every single day, every week? Do we even know how? That's where I'm convicted, really, right? Do we, have we really taught people how to be a disciple and make disciples? Or have we just said, just come to church, that's good. And so that's what we do. We just come to church and we go, okay, I'm here. Oh, say, I can sing, I'll sing, and then I leave. We, we want to do those things. I believe those things honor God, but we want to make sure that we are making disciples. So here's what we're trying to do. We want to lower the value of our service. Okay? want to lower the value of our service because service is so important. Even through COVID, people were freaking out, us included. We're not going to have a service. What? But God hasn't called us to a service. He's called us to a life of mission. 
So we need to get our, our, our hearts and our church in such a place that no matter what happens with the government or other pandemics or whatever the case may be, we can go about being the church of Jesus in discipleship, making disciples, regardless of what the government does. And we're watching the church of Iran, the church of China, going, we're not worried about the government. It's the fastest growing church in the world because they're doing this, because they're making disciples. We have to lower the value of service and raise the value of a discipleship culture. We want to be disciples who make disciples. We want to give our best time. If you have to explain this idea to somebody, here, here it is. We want to give our best time to disciple makers. The service is important. And we will always have a gathering of worshiping Jesus and teaching. You hear me say that? We will always gather. We see that in, in, in Acts. They met in the temple. They met in homes. We will always have a gathering where we worship Jesus together. We come together as the body of Christ. We sing. There's something beautiful about a collective voice. You know, that's why I love choirs. We don't really have one. Maybe one day God will give us a choir. I don't know. But the collective voice is so beautiful in worship and the preached word. That, that'll be something that is a value to us. But we have to lower the value of the service and raise the value of a discipleship culture and give our best time to equipping people. So what is, that is some of the reason we made the time change. What is the purpose of equip? It is the Great Commission, right? Matthew 28, Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says he'll be with us. He also says, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. We kind of forget that one. <laughs> we make it just about conversion. Well, so many people got saved. Well, great. How many people are learning to be disciples? It's both. Make disciples, teach them to obey. And Jesus says he'll be with us. So uh, in the Greek, the, the, the Bible, when it says to go and make disciples, it literally says, as you are going. So it's not like you have to put on some special uniform. Okay, today's disciple making day. No, I'm just sitting here looking at Jeff. For a season, Jeff was driving an Uber. <laughs> and uh, Colby's not here. I don't think you've even been here since Colby's been here. So... A guy comes to our church a few weeks ago and says, man, I've had a card in my pocket for two years. This guy was driving an Uber. <laughs> Jeff just took our business cards and said, hey, man, come to my church. And he would just be a witness to these people. Two years later, this guy shows up and says, I just had to come check it out. And he's been several weeks. As you're going, Jeff, just as he's going, this is what he's doing. What job do you have? As you're going in your job, as you're going in your life. Make disciples. Be a disciple maker. Some of you say, well, I'm not a leader. That's okay. If you're saved, you're what? If you're saved, you're sent. The Great Commission is for every believer. It's not just for special super Christians. The Great Commission is for all of us to be on mission, the mission of Jesus. And so what we want to do is equip you to be those disciples and disciple makers. And we want to do it in rhythms of six weeks, okay? So for the next six weeks, we're going to teach, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm teaching this week, and we have some of our elders and some other leaders, and sometimes we'll have guest teachers that will kind of teach. And we're going to kind of have a structure of like 20 minutes of teaching, 25 minutes maybe, going into 20 minutes or 25 minutes of table conversation. And then at the last 10 minutes, we'll come back and gather and just kind of wrap up what we talked about and go before 12. But we're going to do it in six week rhythms, and we'll have little breaks in between those six weeks. So after these six weeks, we have a week or two that we're not doing a quip, okay? And so don't feel like, oh, I'm, I'm getting into something that's never going to be a break. No, there's going to be a break usually after every six-week session, okay? But this is so good, and I'm, I'm so proud of you. I want to look at this scripture. I don't know if we have it on the screen or not, but this is Ephesians 4, 11 through 16 says, and he, speaking of Jesus, gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers, those five different leaders or groups of leaders, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the seas, by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, 
by craftiness in deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. I really want to challenge you to get into that text again this week. Think about it, because what it says is the leaders of your church, their their job is to equip you for the work of ministry. But for too long, we've just said, no, those guys will do it. No, that's not our job. Our job is to equip you and us all go do it. And we, we can't become the church. We can't become the believers God wants us to be, disciples, just in this old version of leadership down. It's got to be leadership up into the body, and then the body goes out. And the body equips one another and raises one another, and beautiful things begin to happen. We begin to speak truth in love. We begin to grow up into every way that, that, that Christ wants us to, to have. We, 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 we don't get uh, tossed by the craziness of this world and the, and the deceitfulness of the enemy and false doctrine and all these things. We, we get strong as a body together. Okay? All right, I want to finish up. I want to just kind of give you a few things about what the purpose of a triad is. Now, we, we, we touched on this in our Multiply series. Does everybody know what I'm talking about when I say a triad? First thing you think of is three, okay? So a triad, the, the, the optimal number is three. Well, a triad really can be anywhere from two to four, okay? So you can't really be a triad by yourself. You need to have somebody else at least. And it's, it's being intentional, it's saying, you know what, I, to this week, I'm going to meet with somebody. Me and Jeff are going to meet, and I'm, I'm, I'm setting this in my schedule. This is a value to me to meet with another brother. We ask that they be gender-specific. Men meet with men. Women meet with women. So me and Jeff are going to meet. We're going to do some things together. We're going to pray together. We're going to study the Scripture, and I'm going to talk about what those things are. But it's this intentionality of, I'm doing this this week. I would love if every one of you right now, If you're not currently in a triad, think about who can I invite to a meeting this week? And every week you're going to have little challenges, okay? And it's up to you how far you go. You're going to follow us? You're going to move in this direction? It's your intentionality. Who are you meeting with? Who are you being intentional to gather with? And then when we do that, it's about being obedient, followers of Jesus. So it's about saying, Jeff, I'm struggling in this area but I don't want to. I need you to pray for me. I need you to help me. That intentionality leads into accountability. can lead into confessional life. James 5.16 says to the church, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. Right? So maybe a, a, a meeting like this is not great or appropriate for such a thing. But maybe when I meet with Jeff, he would love me in spite of my sin. He would love me in spite of my struggle. And guess what? I've got him just like you. And he would say, I'm praying for you and I'm standing with you and I and here's what I'm struggling with. That's what we do as the body of Christ that we can't do in a gathering like what we just left, okay? I want you to begin to see some reasons for what we're doing. Triads have relationships that are deep. They have authenticity. You're going to just you're going to be real with each other. They have accountability and they deepen our relationship with one another with Jesus. I, I love the numbers. If I had a whiteboard and we may get one in here at some point, but if I had a whiteboard, I'd draw a, a number 1. Because we see Jesus have a wonderful relationship with the Father. He was constantly going away to be connected to the Father, right? So he had a personal relationship and personal time of prayer. He was connected. All of us need to have that with the Father, where individually we are connected. We pray. We seek the Lord. Then another number that we see is Jesus invested in three disciples more than the others, Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John went with Jesus. They, 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 Jesus raised a girl from the dead. And he invited those three men to see that. When Jesus was in, on the Mount of Transfiguration and he came into his glory and this light shines, he allowed those three men to see that. When Jesus was struggling in prayer and he was at his most human of, of moments sort of in the garden, he's praying, he's, he's bleeding drops of blood. He invites Peter, James, and John into that moment, into that struggle. And they fall asleep. 
But there's something, there's a power of three where we can be honest with other people. So there's the, the number of three. The number 12, he has 12 disciples. I hope that you're involved in a city group. And those are about 12. That's a good support system uh, to help support our triads. So we want to make disciples. We both want to go dis- deeper in our own discipleship, but we also want to be intentional in our mission. Okay, Individual growth, missional awareness, and prayer. Those are really the main pieces of what a triad is. Uh, so I, I love Leslie so much, one of our elders, and we started talking about triads back, I don't know, this summer. And Leslie, I just love Leslie. He's just kind of a no-nonsense. He goes, all right, let's start one. And I was in my ideation phase, which I get in quite a bit. And uh, I love the fact that he knows me well enough to go, okay, that's great. Let's start one. I was like, oh, okay, okay, we're going to do this. So here we go. I'm, and so me and Leslie and Adam Brown started a triad back in August or September. And we've been in one every week. And it has been a blessing to kind of go before you and get a sense of what is this like? And is this is clumsy and we fail here and we struggle there. And, but there's no question that our relationship one to another is deeper and closer. Our, uh, we're deeper and closer to the Lord because of our study of Scripture. And there's no question we have a higher sense of awareness of mission. People in our lives that don't know Jesus that we're praying for and we're making efforts to reach out to with accountability. Hey, did you go see Jim? Yeah, no, I didn't get a chance to do this. Okay, we're going to pray that you get a chance to go talk to Jim. So there's this intentionality of discipleship, yes, relationship, and mission all kind of comes together. So um, that's another big thing. We want to lead people to Jesus. Far too long the American church has said, let's just do church. And we've forgotten that, you know, Jesus said, go and make disciples. And we have to lead people to a relationship with Jesus. That is, that is the church. When the church ceases to lead people to Jesus, we cease being the church. That's why it's so important for every one of us to be able to go, I know how to do that. As a Christian, I know how to sit down with somebody who's asking questions and lead them to know Jesus. I know how to do that. That's what we want you to say with confidence soon. We want you to be able to go, yeah, I can do that. I can lead somebody in that direction. Um, That's what the 72 were. If you're keeping up with those biblical numbers that we see, they were sent on mission to make disciples. Um, and then we want to multiply a triad, and we're going to get into this more through these six weeks, but well, there's the three of us. We've had a fourth guy that's kind of come in. He's wanted to come other times. He hadn't been able to come. If he comes for, a, for a three, four, five weeks, and he's going to be consistent, and we now have four, we ask you to multiply and break into two different groups. That's going to be what we're calling a multiplication engine, and so we're going to see growth that way. So now if me and Steve step over and, and Adam and Leslie go over here, then they're going to keep praying about who they can invite in. Now me and Steve are going to be praying, who can we invite in? And when we get to four, we're going to divide again. And God's going to grow our city groups. He's going to grow our church. But more importantly, he's going to grow the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter if the person that, that gets saved ever comes to South City, really. I mean, it matters that they grow in their discipleship. But what matters most is that you've, been, you've taken Jesus to them and you're making disciples. And they are walking with them. If South City is where they choose to connect, great. So we, we want to do that. There's a, a little piece here. I'm going to finish. I've got one, two things left. Um, there is a structure. See, when discipleship is so organic, you know why? Because every one of you is a different disciple in a different stage of walk with Jesus. And when we connect to somebody in a triad, it's, going to be, it's, it's not always going to be easy. Our prayer is that we follow the Spirit of God. Because some people are not going to know a thing about God or care. Why should I be interested in God? And you've got to kind of go into a more of apologetic, why why believe in Jesus? And some people are going to have known the Lord for a while, and you're going to work together. And that's kind of where we are. We've known the Lord for a long time. We're encouraging each other, and we're praying on mission. And it has a different feel. So we just have to follow the Spirit in in kind of what it is. I like to give the example of a trellis and a vine. I grow tomato plants, and when I do you got to have something that will hold those plants up, or they'll grow up and then they'll just fall over. So a triad is one way to make disciples. It's a structure that we're putting down in the ground and going, hey, here's a structure you can use. And as you grow up, other disciples, they can grow up onto this structure and be led to Christ. That's what, it, that's what it's about. All right, here's the last thing. Our hope for triads is that we would develop in this way, that we will be intentional and consistent with our spiritual relationships in our life. That's what we're hoping for you. That we would, that you would, we would all grow in our confidence when we're having these spiritual conversations. That we, we feel confident in how to lead people. 
and disciple people, that we have a consistent interaction and study of Scripture in our lives. Right? That's what's so good about accountability. Next week when we come back, you might sit with the same people, you might not. But if you do, you might go, hey, we talked about so-and-so, how did that go? And all of a sudden, you got to give an answer because somebody loves you enough to ask that question. But see, America and our sin nature and everything wants to just hide and section off and compartmentalize. Let's not talk about those things so I'm not accountable to them. And then we don't grow. This is the mode of growth for the church. Be consistent in interact, interaction and study of Scripture. Develop a transparent and confessional walk with others. Learn and commit to simple rhythms of triads. Learn what this is about and walk it out and become a prayer warrior sensitive to the Spirit in the mission of Jesus. That's what we're hoping for you. Okay? That's it. Now I want us to take a minute to turn to your neighbors, to your tables. It's going to get loud in here, and that's okay. Uh, try not to be too loud. You know, Just talk to the people around your table. Engage. Ask questions. Be connected. All right? Let's spend some time, and we'll bring you back together in another 20 minutes or so. Your discussion questions are in your manual. Take a look at those. Hey, the good news is the good news is you're enjoying spending time with each other, and that's awesome. I love it. All right, I, I want to ask just very quickly. I'll give you three uh, three opportunities here for one for a question, uh, clarification, something that is amazing God's done in the next last few minutes. Three things. Anything? Questions? Thoughts? Ideas? Anything? Anybody? Quickly. Anything? Yeah. Yeah. Are you like if we're not? I'm not in a triad. Uh huh. I want to be in a triad. Am I am I wanting to seek out people in my city group to do a triad, or am I just as a big guy? Yes. I mean, are you wanting it to come from city group? Okay. Yeah. So, what is the spirit? What's the spirit leading you to do? So an easy place could be your city group. Hey, she doesn't have somebody. Let's just get together right now to get started. Let's start so we can pray for one another and do that. Great. But if the Lord's laying on your heart somebody at work or somebody in your neighborhood and they're willing to. Go for it. What, what is the Spirit leading you to do? Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. Bring the non-believers in for sure, but in my experience, I got all messed up with people at different levels, and I was bringing down the vision and the mission of the tribe to try and do that, and nobody was growing deeply, and it was just it got weird and hard. For yeah. Reason. When I should have brought that initial non-believer in, she was like, "Yes, I want this. I desire it. I just can't keep up because I've yeah. never read the Bible before, and I have no idea what's happening." Yeah. And I should have pulled her aside and started a new right. tie with her. But my other non-believer, who's in it, who has a background in church, could keep up, and she's still interested too. So she is, and she's going along with us and can be a part of the original tribe. So yeah. you just kind of have to use your wisdom, but yes, definitely include. Both. Both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the bottom line is anybody who's willing to do through, go through the structure of a triad, read scripture, be accountable to one another, pray together, connect authentically, talk about the Lord. I mean, they can be in a triad whether they know the Lord or not, or they're open to it. But yeah, there's some complexity. It is good to start with believers in the sense that you're praying on mission, you're growing together, and then preparing for that mission. To you know, and so yeah, there has to be some sensitivity as you're reaching out to people. If you bring you know, two or th she tried to bring like two or three unbelievers into a group, bigger group, like six people. And it kind of was like, I don't know what to do with this. And so there was too much uh, disparity between the two. So, yeah, I think um, there's some wisdom in that. And again, we're trying to find the this, this sweet spot of spirit lead us to make disciples with one another and yet be missional for people who don't know Jesus. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I just want to speak. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for because it brought up to mind something I read this week. And in fact, I shared this with Anthony the other day. And it's, a, it's a quote from um, David Platt. He wrote a book called Radical. Anyway, so this is, this is about uh, moving from things that happen in the church, which are like programs, checking the box, 
one person teaching and everybody listening no so what we're moving to is just authentic more relationship so listen to what david platt said and this really is right on target with adrian making disciples is not an easy process it is trying it is messy um, it is slow, tedious, even painful at times. Uh, it is all these things because it is relational, uh -huh. not programs, okay? Um, Jesus has not given us an effortless step-by-step -step formula for impacting nations for his glory. He has given us people. Uh -huh. And he has said, live for them, love them, serve them, and lead them. Lead them to follow me. Lead them to lead others to follow me. In the process, you will multiply the gospel to the ends of the earth. Amen. David Platt. And so it is messy sometimes, and, and, it, should, and it has to be. Yeah. Thank you. One last question or clarifying point or anything from anybody? Yeah. So what were you saying, like, and we talked about this at our, at our table, but so... If it's one believer with a non-believer, and that's how you seek to sort out, if the Lord's going to take you in that direction, if that's what he wants you to think. So be careful because if you've got two non-believers with one believer, you have more of an opportunity more of an opportunity for that one believer to be influenced by those two non-believers. So there can become that, but it just it would depend on the situation and who those people were, but like yeah if, if we can help let us know but um again this is a structure we're trying to give that's going to have an organic nature to it that's going to be messy as jeff has said so hopefully the big thing is intentionality who's not in a triad right now that this week you're going to make an effort to be in one i'm not going to ask you to raise your hand but who who's who's, who's going to do something with this or go oh, okay Let's do something with us. Be intentional. That's what we're saying. Just start somewhere. Get going, right? And it'll be a blessing to your life. A uh, couple of things before we go. I want to give a huge shout out to the people who have served us today beautifully. Cynthia, Mark, Daryl, Trace, all the people who've helped with the donuts and the coffee and deal us getting the room set up. And if you've been a part of that, we just want to say thank you. We love you. Um, we also, uh, you know, when it comes to our child care, we have, uh, child care workers that are caring for our kids and Katie Little is going to be our coordinator for overseeing that child care, uh, stuff. And we love Katie. Thank you for serving that way. Thank you. Appreciate the way she's serving. Um, Carl and Casey chopping ice. Yes. You guys, thank you very much for helping us not just slip and fall. Anything else? All right, next week, we're going to talk about how do you soap? What is a soap? And what does it look like for us to, to do this in our triads? What, what, what does, and by the way, this is going to be fun. Next week, we're going to break into triads, and we're going to try it, okay? God bless you. I want to pray for us as we leave, and uh, then we'll get back to this next week, okay? Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for these friends. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your body. Help us to be disciples not just the tenders. Help us to be in the fray, God, getting our hands dirty in the lives of people so that we can make disciples for your glory and we can love people well. God, help us not to just be spectators. Move us a position in intentionality to know you and make you known. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.